You know me, Seth? I've been doing some contemplation, and I think I've discovered something about myself. I'm an anarcho-communist. What? Yeah. I think the government shouldn't exist, but also support the government's authority to steal people's shit and restrict their freedoms. Especially if the shit that gets stolen then gets given to me. Hardly sounds like anarchy if you endorse the state's use of power to take shit from people. Hardly sounds like something good, too. The way I see it, it's a matter of trust. If I just surrender my heart to the government and believe on faith in its benevolence, I can be assured that one day the government will do the right thing and dissolve itself. Uh-huh. You know, I didn't always have this trust. I used to be doubtful for a long time about the good nature of the state, but as of late I've come to accept that the government cares about me and will do what I want it to do, so long as I endorse its authority. And what exactly prompted that change in your mind? Oh, I've started watching cable news. I, Makiva, have been a Christian atheist. I know it is a paradox, but I really believe for a long time that I, Makiva, have been a Christian atheist. Well, it does sound like a paradox to the people who define atheist as a person who doesn't believe in a god, and Christianity as people who do believe in a Christian god. But we're in 2022 where paradoxes are obligatory and definitions are as stable as an ozone molecule tossed into a room full of hydrogen, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> Seriously though, as soon as you tweak either definition even a bit, it makes perfect sense as a statement. For example, if you define Christian as acting based on a Christian moral framework, rather than believing in the Christian God, then you can de facto be a Christian atheist. So instead of getting stuck on abstract definitions or something, how about we try to figure out what you exactly mean by those words and work with that? Mm. What, does, what does that mean? Break that down. Break that down. I used to be a chronic warrior. Mm where I would pray about something, but my faith really wasn't there to see if God would actually do it. So I said I believed him, but I really didn't. My actions spoke out of my words. Let's see if I get you right. You had an issue, something that worried you, and you would pray, but you thought that it wouldn't work. And in your words, I said I believed him, but my actions were louder than my words. Which to me sounds like you believed that there was a god, but you just didn't believe that he would bother to help you. And that's actually a rather rather common idea among Christians to call it atheism. And it's also a rather rather common problem that Christians face in a tight spot. Because, I mean, god or no god, you still have to pay your bill after all. Right? Now, we can call that atheist if you like, but that would make me a very very different sort of atheist than you would be. And I would require a different definition than yours at that point because I would no longer fit into that category. Unlike you, I don't have anything like doubts about does God help in my head. My brain is so non-God tuned that that sort of thought doesn't even cross my mind. It would be as weird to me as asking myself why I keep closing the window every night in order for aliens not to be able to come in and maybe abduct me because I'm not really convinced that they would actually come for me. Whereas in reality, that thought would not occur to me because in my head, aliens just don't even exist. And just to be clear, that is not a job at you or something and it's not a your definition, my definition issue either. It is a very, very common issue that I keep having with a lot of people. You see, even though many US atheists, especially the ones who just dropped their faith, fit the standard definition of atheist to a T, they still act religious. I am as detached and alien compared to them as I am to you. Because while they very clearly do not believe in any sort of divine dear leader, they still act distinctly religious, merely projecting their old framework onto a new dogma with new versions of saints and devils and sacred and profane and rituals and virtue and slogans and, of course, a bastard version of the original sin. It's bizarre! 
It's as if they chopped off the head of their dogma, but the body keeps on walking. Or like a new version of Don't Throw the Baby Out with the Bathwater, where they somehow manage to throw out the baby and keep the bathwater. Long story short, your idea of atheism does not match mine, but I am fine with using it as long as you understand that your perspective on faith and lack thereof is a very, very specific one that not only doesn't, but cannot be applied to me whatsoever. And I saw something one time that says, you can't worry and worship at the same time. So where's my heart at? Is my heart about worrying about the situation or am I really having a heart of surrender and giving it over to God? He said to cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So do I trust him to take care of my situation? And for a long time, I didn't. Hmm. Have you ever wondered if that saying maybe isn't quite um, accurate? Just maybe? Because worrying about problems is not you being an atheist. That's just you being smart. Believe in God or not, if there is something that is troubling and requires attention, then you would do well to give it attention. Of course, there are cases where you can't really do much about it, and so you worry needlessly. But if you wouldn't have that drive, if you would just wave it off and be like, oh, well, Jesus helps with it anytime you face a problem, then the problem would never get solved. Mm. I just want to get a little bit technical. What's the definition of an atheist? Yes. Well, based on the definition, an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in God. They don't believe that God exists. And a Christian is a follower. A, a follower, follower of, of, Christ, of Christ. Meaning that you believe that God. there is a God. Yeah. So far, so good. We have clarified our definition. Now let's apply it. Do you think that you don't or didn't believe in a God? In those situations so, so technically those words are mutually exclusive mm -hmm. you know technically we can't be a christian and an atheist at the same time but sometimes we function as atheists because like like kiva was saying you know i could have devotion and worship um in the morning before i start my day and then when stuff gets hectic it's it's like i forget it's like i have spiritual amnesia mm. no just no, you forgetting a ritual or not spending 24-7 thinking about the same thing is not you being an atheist or having amnesia. It's your brain trying to prioritize tasks. Let me explain what I mean. Let's say you have a kid and you love it to the moon and back and it means the world to you. Now let's say that you have a car accident and forget to bake cookies for your kid because you're not there and you're too busy getting that stupid car fixed up and functional again because you have to drive it to work the next morning. Does that mean you don't love your kid? No. Does it mean that you're an a kidist? No. It simply means that there were more pressing things to deal with and that as a result you didn't manage to deal with the other ones. Now, you can scold yourself all you want for not being perfect, for having doubts, or whatnot. But at the end of the day, real life is not a cookie cutter star you very like video game. It is chaotic and it is messy. And adapting to that messiness is a smart thing to do. Even if it doesn't make you feel all that virtuous. And even if sometimes it makes you doubt certain things you believe. And to be honest, this sort of thinking always amuses me because it makes it sound as though virtue is closely connected to stupidity. I mean, think about it. You could deal with your problems and make your life easier in the future, but you could also worry that you're worrying too much and drop it all and pray to be a virtuous person instead. Because while you still have every single one of those problems to deal with later, and potentially even more problems related to those you already had because you weren't dealing with them, at least you have proven to yourself that you are a good, good, faithful Christian. It's just not a smart thing to do. And worry creeps in. And if I don't get on that right away, if I don't claim the text, if I don't go back to my devotion, and I often do devotions <laughs> specific to worry and anxiety. and anxiety and finances because i feel like those are some of my main struggles you know from day to day mm. 
So, you're worried about worship and about skipping worship opportunities, and that makes you how exactly an atheist? Because as far as your definition is concerned, you have at no point decided that there is no God. You may have not given it that much attention in a particular moment, you may have doubted it at some point, but that doesn't just make your belief go away. So, you know... So are you saying that you too, because I said I, mm -hmm. had identified as a Christian atheist. Yeah. How, how has that walk been for you? Are you a functioning atheist mm -hmm. who say you believe in Christ and when it's time to act on it, how's your belief system? Yeah, I think that I do, I do suffer from that. Let me bring up two examples that explain to you why your way of thinking doesn't match reality. First one is houses. Now, we all for the most part agree on an earth not being flat, but spherical-ish. However, when we build houses, we do not just sit there and calculate the earth curvature into the equation, but instead simply build it straight. Flat and straight. Does that make us practical flat earthers? I would say no. Second example, germs. The fact that you two exist means that at some point in the past, your parents exchanged a lot of germs. And the fact that your daughter exists means that you exchanged a lot of germs, among other liquids. People shaking hands ignore germs. People eating raw fruit ignore germs. People eating raw fruit after washing it still ignore germs. Does that make them practical germ theory denialists? I would say no. Believing something exists and acting upon it 24-7 are two very, very different things. And the fact itself that you worry about not being worshipy enough shows not only how much you believe what you believe, but also how much you care about it. No matter what sort of pretzel you seem to twist your experience into, you do still not fit your definition of an atheist. Now, recently, I've been more at peace with it because, I, I don't know, I think we've been addressing it specifically in prayer and I think that's something important you know a lot of the times we overlook our, our weaknesses and we think oh God's gonna help us overcome it I am really glad that you feel like you get help however I do have a little little quick question for you what God exactly do you think is helping you from the prayers you sent if you by your own definition believe that there is no God because I have to be honest it just doesn't make much sense. It's like saying that you are diligently writing letters to Santa Claus while being convinced there is no Santa Claus. It seems to me that you are equating the non-pious Christian or the struggling Christian with atheists, and I am very confused as to why you would find it necessary to do so. Is this one of those odd Christian mea culpa things where you virtue signal by publicly beating yourself over the head and call yourself an naughty sinner? Or is it just some sort of horrible condition that you people make up? Except instead of the classics, you know, self-inflicted ADHD, the Mortal Kombat flu, Pokemon dysphoria, internalized soy boy supremacy, furry is meant cat language to rat syndrome, you just go for a more niche old-timey version and simply say you suffer from atheism? I seriously don't know where this comes from. But I think for us, like we had to pray about it specifically and not just you know i'm talking morning and night but it's something that is continual Continuous. during the day yeah. um constantly saying god help me to get through this moment mm -hmm. and recently i've been saying you know it's just a test yes it's just a test because to be honest y'all you know this is our our truth we mm -hmm. always speak our truth on this channel we are going through a season of unknown mm. We don't know what the next step is for a lot of things. Very understandable, very human. Sometimes people end up in unforeseen situations, either good or bad, and they have to get creative to adapt quickly. But I still don't quite understand how praying repeatedly makes you a practical atheist. If anything, it makes you a practical theist. And one of my friends told me that's the perfect place to be because that's where mm. we'll be more sensitive to God and listen to him more, you know, and take heed to instruction. 
Either that or it's a denial and coping mechanism for people who doubt their long-term prayer investment has an actual impact. Talking of cope, I skimmed through the entire video of course before I recorded it and after this bit they go on about hardship and God testing them and in a nutshell a lot of coping with a situation. And while I hope for them that they can get to a situation where they can feel more relaxed and less worried and maybe help other people in very non-intuitive ways to me but still help them to come to a situation where they're better off, then that is great. But none of that is actually relevant for the scope of this video and so I left it out. If you would like to see it, link is in the description below and if I forgot the link as I usually do leave a comment in the comment section and chastise me for it. Original scene or something. Having said that, their video title and their idea of atheist Christian doesn't seem to make sense to me, in fact it sounds completely bonkers, based on their own definition. And they, alas, do not qualify as atheists in my opinion, Christian or otherwise. However, it was still very entertaining to hear from them and see how they tried to pretzel their ideas into existence out of nowhere. Thank you all for watching, please like, share and subscribe and if you really like what I do, please consider supporting me. These wonderful people are supporting me already and I love them so much. Mwah. Have a great evening. Oh, Iseth, before you go, I've made another discovery about myself. Mmm, what is it this time? I'm a male woman. You really need to stop watching TV, my friend.